Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show here at Amherst Media and uh, still uh, working collaboratively with the Amherst League of Women Voters. Um, although we've changed our format, have, having gone into 2020, the new decade, uh, last year we did a show every week, now we're doing them every other week. But we're still going to be bringing interesting people uh, into the studio to talk about uh, the work that they do, uh, whether they're in the government or do things that can connect and touch our new uh, local government and uh, town council. So we're going to keep following the transition here in Amherst to our new form of government. Today uh, we have two guests with us and uh, these are people who have been working really hard in the community around uh, homelessness and housing and uh, of course, this community has made a priority over time of trying to live by this idea that uh, we're all in this together and we have responsibility to help and care for each other, especially those who find themselves on hard times or have difficult situations that they have to deal with. And so Wailing is very well known here in town. Um, how long have you been in town? 25 years exactly. 25 years. I'm well years. known, but I am not on the most wanted list. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> well known because you've been active in the community. Um, so uh, tell us first how you got to Amherst, what brought you to town, and then we'll uh, talk about what your passions are. Oh, I came here with my husband and four children from Tennessee, and we moved up here because Amherst has excellent school system and they have a wonderful orchestra program. So all my children had gone through the school system orchestra program, and they all received wonderful, excellent education. For that, I'm just so grateful. Great, and so that, if I'm remembering correctly, four children. Yes, we have four, four children. children. And they went through the Emma school systems, they went off to college. Do I remember that two or three of them ended up in the big Ivy League school? Yes, I'm very <laughs> proud to say. You should be. So, uh, three graduates from Harvard, and the fourth? Uh, Oberlin College. Oberlin. Pretty good. Okay, <laughs> uh, absolutely, especially for music. And was that one of the children who was really He didn't play music. music. He ended up he going didn't. to economics. Interesting. And he is now working as the chief economist for the state of Maryland. Wow. The chief economist for the state of Maryland. Wow. It's a nice title, but he said to me, I only have one person in the office, myself, and <laughs> others who help me. So he's the chief of himself. <laughs> he's the chief. <laughs> Very good. And we also have Tom Fair uh, with us today. Tom, uh, tell us how you found your way to Amherst. I was farming in Montague, and uh, the land that I was farming on um, was going to be used to build houses. And so I was asked to move, and um, I never quite successfully found another good piece of land. So I, after I moved that from that piece of land, uh, I tried two or three other places, and it it was never as successful as it was. So I ended up coming to Amherst because I got a job working at All Things Local, which mm -hmm. was a year-round indoors farmers market in downtown Amherst and um, that promptly closed about after a year I was working there and then that's when it it really got difficult and um, I found myself uh, being without a home mm -hmm. and I just stayed in the Amherst area because it was uh, I had a car at the time but I but the reason I stay close to Amherst is because I think Amherst has solved the food poverty issue. I mean, if you're hungry and you're in Amherst, then you're just not paying attention because there's at least at least 20 places during the week where you can get food. So, so I, you can get meals and you, you get can meals get, and you can also get, get food products. Food products, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, so that was, um, I stayed in Amherst because of my basic needs. And then I went back to UMass in 
2015, from 2015 to 2017, to get my bachelor's in agriculture. And um, that was quite expensive thing to do. And um, after I graduated, I just really found it difficult to, to find good work. And, and that um, compounded what was going on. So mm -hmm. um, that was how I got to Amherst, yeah. And your connection uh, and the reason you're here is because you met Wei Ling and her colleagues at Amherst Community Connections. Yes. And that was because you first needed food. And Wei Ling, your first work in town uh, as a volunteer and, uh, and as a community activist was around food. And to remind us about that. Oh, that was back in 20, um, since 1996, I started working as an operator for a local soup kitchen called Not Bread Alone at the First Congregational Church. And uh, for a dozen plus years, I cooked, cleaned, worked with volunteers, prepared gorgeous, nutritious, delicious meals Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's always wonderful lentil soups with garlic bread and Italian, you know, cuisines not as good as yours. But we have a good crowd. But at the end of the day, I noticed all those wonderful guests, 60, 70 of them, would come and went. And when they left, I knew that they were still going to be out on the street because they were homeless. They had no place to go. So after some thinking, I realized I could be of more service to them if I could help them get housing when they can make a nice meal for themselves if they have mm -hmm. a place to call home. Mm -hmm. So instead of coming to the soup kitchen, they can cook for themselves, have friends over, and have a really normal life that we are all entitled should have. And so, so your work then progressed from food to shelter. Yes, food, shelter, and housing. And housing, because ultimately the solution to homelessness is a place to live. <laughs> housing yeah. is the solution to homelessness. And so tell us what your observation and experience has been working in this community around homelessness and housing. Well, I have to say the town of Amherst and the people of Amherst have been very mindful and generous. I will talk about the town. Over the years, when Amherst Community Connections applied for grant funding to provide temporary vouchers for the homeless, every time when we ask, the town would give us money for housing vouchers. So that shows the town is really mindful of the homeless issues. And our agency is very small. We rely on 100% uh, volunteers. Mm -hmm. So with such a small budget, the public over these 10 plus years has been donating generously every year mm -hmm. to our agency, Amherst Community Connections, such that we can meet our rent payment. We can pay for the internet connection that we can buy paper to mm -hmm. print documents. So the support of the community and the town of Amherst not only support us financially, but there are age, uh, organizations such as the Affordable Housing Trust, the, the town entity, that they really put their stamp on many issues, whether it's making easier for people to access uh, public housing by streamlining the process, or coming up forums to really hear from the homeless community their plight and their mm -hmm. solutions. So they are really a very on the ground work force that we and see. Do I recall that at one point the town had a, a, um, uh, a homelessness task force or committee mm -hmm. that you were a member of and, and one of the leaders of? Oh, yes. And that was an interim step between the uh, work on food mm -hmm. and the formation of Amherst Community Connections, is that right, correct? Right, that's correct, you got good memory. Yeah, that was back in 2010 when I was the chair of the Committee on Homelessness, which is a town committee. And uh, working with the committee members, including Mr. Kevin Noonan, 
who mm -hmm. used to run a shelter in Springfield. In Springfield yes. Right. Okay. So through the work of the community members and the help of Mr. Noonan, he had became a committee member as well. So through all of us work, the town gave us the blessing as the committee that we went out looking for a site for shelter. And with all the churches that we went to, there were three of them say, yes, we want to be part of the solution. But at the end of the day, when analysis is done, um, the first Baptist church was the church with the best condition in terms of the sheltering space available. So then in 2010, the First Baptist Church became a warming center that Mr. Noonan and other volunteers and myself, we were there making soups, making grilled cheese sandwiches, and that was the first winter when the shelter was started. In a typical year, how many people come through Amherst Community Connections looking for help with housing? Oh, um, our most recent statistics that in 2019, this past year, now we are hitting almost 800 unique individual households. Some of the households have two people, children. Yeah. Some of the household has one person. So almost 800 unique individuals. Here in this little town. Believe it or not, you might think Amherst is a quite wealthy, you know, fluent town. But of those 800 people, 800 households who came to us, 90% of them either they are homeless or they are facing eviction or they experience inability to pay rent behind on rent about to be evicted. So almost 90% of the 800 households who came to us have this issue. And we seem to be the only agency in town focused strictly just on housing. But anything touches on housing, we would try to help. So Tom, you connected with Wei Ling around your homelessness. You were yeah, homeless for a period of time. A co-worker of mine told me to go to the um, Amherst Housing Authority and see what they had for housing, and then they sent me over to ACC uh, one rainy morning, and I just I did it because I said I would. And then uh, it was how I was welcomed that I knew I had come to the right place. And so you were not hopeful at first, but well, you I, thought you got to do it. Indifferent. I, you, so it's you not just, that I wasn't yeah, hopeful. I was yeah. just, my coworker said to go over there, and I said I would, so I did what I said. And I, I didn't have any preconceptions of what would happen. And I was surprised by what what did occur. And I graduated very quickly through the programs and the and the paperwork, the mountains of paperwork. <laughs> uh, that That's the one thing and you just, you know, you shake your head and you do it. But the, I think the biggest reason why it worked for me was that I cooperated. Uh -huh. I didn't go in there with any preconceived notion of how it should work. And over the time you were connected with them, what were the things that they worked with you on? Uh, organizing my debt um, uh, trying to find me more work, uh, um, just just supporting uh, supporting me with all the the very little things on a di on a weekly basis, sometimes mm -hmm. twice a week, and that makes all the difference in the world. You know, you, sometimes you think you have to start with all the big, yeah. difficult things. Mm -hmm. But if you organize and all the all the small things like getting your social security card and having the right identification and then having um, all the paperwork that you need to verify other paperwork mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. um, those are the really important things that I think that go unseen. So they became a partner for yeah. you, yeah. a guide and a partner yeah. in helping you go through all of the little steps leading to the big steps. Yeah. And, and where it, did it take you? It just, it, I felt good being organized. You know, nothing was going to be a surprise. I wasn't going to get a phone call saying there's this emergency. Um, you know, I have to come up with $500 for this or that. As there was no surprises mm -hmm. after a certain time, you know. Um, and I was still in my car. 
I converted my car into uh, like a camper, so it wasn't incredibly uncomfortable. Um, it was uncomfortable, but it it wasn't the worst thing that mm -hmm. could have happened. And and then I got into a, um, a transitional room, and that was a, two months of that. And then I another two months in a different place, and. Uh, I finally got my Section 8 voucher, and now I'm in a place that's mine. Uh, my name's on the lease. I'm not part of any program anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you're employed. I have steady work right next Excellent. door at Great. the Jones Library, so Beautiful. I don't need transportation. But if I did need transportation, the busing in Amherst is... Works pretty well. It's exceptional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can get anywhere you want to go mm -hmm. any time of day. So. So you feel a real part of the community, and I this do. is your home yeah. now. Yeah. And you might prefer to be farming, but you need to go in a new direction, and they helped you find that new direction. Yeah, it's like yeah. Um, there's a, a confidence now that mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not really looking over my shoulder anymore, and that's the, I have to get used to that because when I finish work. And I go home and I'm cooking dinner. I'm like, what's the catch? You know, because I still have that feeling that you know, something is amiss, but it's not. It's, but it's not, yeah. We're just, it's you, just. You have to get used to the I fact to, that you are now yeah. who you really are. <laughs> and you're you can, getting there, yeah. Yeah, and you're, you're yeah. able to support yourself and, mm -hmm. and you're a productive member of the community and you just got to get used to yeah. that idea again because you were before. Yeah, and you hit a hard time. Yeah, I had a hard time. I mean, I don't think anybody really knew. I I didn't really broadcast it that yeah. I had a full time job and I didn't have a home. Um, mm. So, um, I think I was surviving pretty well, you know, despite not having a a place. You know, I I had all of all of what I need with me. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for the experience too, because of the change of perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, and now my new situation um, just feels so good that I could be nothing other than grateful. So mm -hmm. it's been um, it's been quite a quite a journey. When I was working in Boston on Thanksgiving, for probably five or six years, I would go to Pine Street Inn, which is the biggest shelter in Boston very well known there and tremendous facility huge number of people and the stories the people we would meet and the stories we would hear were just so amazing because these were many of these people were people who had very high training they were engineers they were lawyers they were business owners and they hit a rough patch in their life and in most of those cases, a single incident led to a series of other incidents which led to them becoming homeless. And you meet these people and you think, wow, this can happen to anybody. No. You know, uh, a health situation, a family breakup, uh, sudden unexpected employment, and you are in a new world. And you have to figure out how to navigate it. So, yeah. well, congratulations that you're you're on a really great path. Well, I don't think it it would have been such a success story had it not been an Amherst, because uh, mm -hmm. I think that, as Wayling said earlier, the uh, the people of Amherst are very generous and conscientious, and and there is no food poverty. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's one of the biggest things. There are a lot of hungry people, but they're not, but they have a way to feed themselves. Absolutely. Because of the Amherst. But what's next on housing? Because I'm assuming that we haven't fixed everything we need to fix in that room. No, no. not at all. So, Wayling, <laughs> do you want to weigh in on, on what you see from the organization's perspective about what the next steps are? and? Because um, I'm really excited to hear the conversation about how from the people who are working with these kinds of situations that we've got a great food system in town and we have an improving system and situation around homelessness. But we're not done yet. What's next? 
Well, what's next? It's always producing more housing that people can afford. Right mm. now, the Amherst housing market is so unaffordable. Uh, more than 50% of the people who are renters, they are paying more than 50% of their income on housing. So anytime, as you said, they have a little bit of incident, whether it being be, whether it's utility bill high due to the winter, or loss of employment, or sickness, they will fall behind on their rent. And when you have rent owed to the landlord, the next thing you will know is the eviction. So in Amherst, we really need to produce more housing that's affordable to our residents here. And while we are struggling to come up with more housing for the people who are you know, on the verge of becoming homeless due to the high rent, um, I want to ask the public to be more supportive of the efforts, in particular the Northampton Road 28 units of studio apartments has had a lot of oppositions uh, from some of the public members. And if we all recognize housing is a basic human needs and basic human right. So when you speak against a development, you may not be so readily saying no. You want to think everyone should have housing. But if the idea is, oh, the housing is going to be for those who are homeless, then shouldn't be here. I want to ask all of us to go inside of each one of us, think, if the person who is experiencing homelessness, if it's my brother, it's my father, it's my aunt, how will we handle that compassion, mm -hmm. kindness, and being mindful of how our opposition can impact people who really don't have a voice in the community because they are homeless, they are struggling, they are being evicted. So that would be We've something. We've had on the show as a guest twice, I believe, Jack, uh, John, John, John Hornick. Horn, John Hornick, yes. not Jack. I keep thinking of, I know a Jack Horner, and it's John Hornick, Hornick, who's the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust in Amherst. Can you talk a little bit about your views on uh, the work that they're doing? And because uh, they're very much behind that uh, Northampton Road property that you're talking about. Um, and they recently came out with a plan, which is been reviewed by the uh, town council. Um, give us some thoughts uh, and reaction to what you know about the work that they're doing in terms of their long-range plan and, um, uh, and the work that they're doing. Well, I must uh, profess that I do not know enough to make comments on all the projects they do. But is, as a member of the nonprofit communities, we had to go to the uh, Affordable Housing Trust to ask for support for the projects we do. And I'll use this as example to show the breadth of the work that they have in mind. We provide social service to prevent homelessness. We provide social service to those who are homeless. And the homeless population, it's a fairly small population. And the population who are being rent behind, being evicted, also a small population. So the Affordable Housing Trust, they have a lot on their table. So when we went to them a couple of months ago asking if they could lend their committee support for a grant proposal that we are writing, which is called the Housing-Based Homeless Services, mm -hmm. after I made a presentation, I could see the members of the committee look at me, really gave me the encouragement I need. So at the end of the 10 minutes presentation, they said, yes, this is the kind of things that we need. While we as a committee, Housing Trust Fund, working to build more affordable housing for those who are homeless on the street, we must find a way for them to have some stability, some housing stability. Because of that realization, affordable housing takes time. But what do people need in the meantime? Because of their insight, they understand support service is also very much needed. So that's something I have to mm -hmm. say that the committee trust members, they are made up with people who really have been there and really understand the needs for housing. And I want to do a shout out for their breadth of their work. Not only they tackle the most basic, how to build more units, but they are in the forefront of working with legislatures to talk about the 40R zoning mm -hmm. 
and how we can address the housing restrictions by looking at the zoning bylaws. So those are the big pictures. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Hornick, who has such a breadth of the policy landscape, he was able to work with his committee members and really come up with very concrete, different, various pr proposals to propose to the town of Amherst. And as you said earlier, helping people stay in their homes and not become homeless is job one. Job two is if they are homeless or become homeless, to give them the wraparound services, as they say in the jargon, so that you're not just looking at the housing, you're looking at the wide range of things that are necessary, as Tom experienced, in order to be able to get through that tough time and get yourself back into a living situation that gives you stability and security so you can go on to work and doing other things that you need to do. Very true. Yeah, the stability. Maybe, Tom, you have something to say how the housing stability has made it easy for you, maybe, to carry on your job. Give us well, one yeah. minute on that because we're almost out of time, but that would be great to hear your thought on that. Well, I mean, there's, it's night and day um, having a place to, uh, to shower and cook meals and to sleep through the night and not having one. I mean, there's just that I'm still, it's still sinking in and I'm still in the in the gratitude phase, but uh, I don't think there's any comparison. I mean, to how to you if you have a place to live, you can self-actualize. You know, you mm -hmm. you can you can become yourself, but you can't really do that if you're trying to you know not freeze to death. Right. So it's it just makes all the difference in the world. I don't know what's ahead, but I think very good things are ahead. Right. Well, Waylon Greeny, thank you for the work you've done for these decades, both in food and now in shelter. And Tom, congratulations to okay. you. It's really an inspiring story yeah, to great. see someone who's making it again. Okay. So that's great. And thank you for joining us. And you've heard it here. There's a lot going on in Amherst that you can help with uh, um, in many different ways. Be a cheerleader, be a funder, um, be a supporter. So thank you, and we'll see you again another time.